This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Hello and welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicke and I'm here with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Hi Dave, hi Jess. Hi Matt, hi Dave. Dave, um, just before we started you said I've been trialling a new intro for the show and then you hit us with it and I loved it. Did you really like it? A little change of inflection on the fourth syllable. Very nuanced. It's a bold new world. Yeah. I didn't think it could get better. And when you said I've got a new one, I was like, Dave, you crazy. I'm worried about the hate mail, to be honest. Well, and and that's Because people don't like change. Yeah, and every pioneer in any industry fears that. But you have to be brave. You have to be bold. You have to be Maybelline. Yeah. People don't like it, but they'll look back on today and they'll say, geez, it was a different time, wasn't it, back then? Yeah. Before Dave changed it all. Wow. I can't even imagine. We're part of history right now. Yeah. Those butterfly wings you just flapped mm. in our faces. Mm-hmm. Who knows what windy effects they may have. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for being so brave. Thank you so much. And if you are just joining us for the first time, well, that's the best intro you've ever heard. And don't go back. Don't listen to any of our previous episodes. There's some good episodes back no, there. No, but you can't listen to them. Yeah, but they don't have good intros. Yeah, so they're trash now. They're okay. trash episodes. Gotta Everything go- we've ever done is trash. Got to go back and revoice them. That's true. We'll do it. We'll let you know when that's been done. For now, trash. Don't listen. Please. No, listen. I beg of you. Listen or more. (laughs) Please listen. Man, I'm just doing that thing where I'm like making it like the forbidden fruit and then they're like, oh, I'm just going to have a sneaky Uh, listen. Hey, I tell you what, please don't buy tickets to our show in Adelaide next month. Don't. Please. Don't. Stay away. No. No, I reckon they should. Is this working? Oh, my yet? God, Matt. Is this working yet? You do not get it. Oh. Matt, tell them not to come. Hey, I'm in Perth right now. Don't come to my show tonight or the following nights, but yeah. do come. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's closer, it's yeah. It's the subtext. Great. Yeah. So if you want to come to Adelaide, you can find tickets at dogoonpod.com. That's right. Pod.com. Uh, and the uh, uh, details in the show notes. Also, for my shows in Perth at the moment, I'm here in the sunny state right now fanning myself with sun. <laughs> and it feels real good. Uh, you can find our details at mattstuartcomedy.com slash gigs. That's right. Well, you can also find tickets to your Adelaide, Melbourne, and Brisbane shows. That's right. Maybe Sydney if that's been announced by now. I'm not sure. <laughs> now, we're also doing four live podcasts at the Melbourne Comedy Festival at the end of March through into April. Love to have you there as well. They're always the best. It's my favourite time of year. It's like Christmas, but better. That's right. And we're not going to be putting them all out this year. In the last couple of years, we put all four episodes out into the stream, but we're trying not to overflow it with live episodes this year, so we'll probably only be putting one or two of them out. So if you come into the room, you'll be seeing some real sussy and sassiness. Sussy. We're going to be very sussy this yeah, year. Yeah, I cannot wait to suss up. Do go on after dark in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, sus. Anyway, if, if you are new to the show, yes, it is all plugs. <laughs> Thank you and good night. Let us get into this week's episode. Before I do that, Matt, do you want to quickly tell the listener what the show is? Yeah, if you're new, new boo, 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 boo. <laughs> and if, sorry, a little scatting. We normally do a it's bit of a scatting sc- at the Just top of the show. As a sign of respect. <laughs> as a sign of respect. Tribute yes. to Louis Armstrong, of course. Uh, so if you are new to the show, um, yeah, we do scat at the start and then we uh, rotate between the three of us. One of us uh, does scat. a report. Uh, mm-hmm. Scat, sorry. Boo, 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 boo. But that was my turn to scat. And then one of the other three does a report uh, on a topic they've researched, usually which has been suggested by the listeners. Uh, this week, Dave is doing that report. Jess and I don't know what the topic is, but Dave will get us onto that topic with a question. And this week's question is... Well, my question, you kind of do know what the topic is, but I want to see if you remember what the topic is. I... Cast your minds back <laughs> a few weeks now. Okay. Oh. This is, in in many ways, a second Ah, yes. That's right. God, I really don't remember much that happens in this room. Okay. Let's see. Which island did I mention and tell you to remember on my last episode Uh, when I talked about the Essex, the boat that was struck and sunk by a whale? I just remember that the whales have semen in their foreheads. Sperm whales. Sperm whales. And was this the ones? It wasn't the ones that has the tortoise on it, was it? It was the tortoise. Galapagos. 
No, it wasn't Galapagos, was it? Oh, next no, it door. Is the one, one that burnt down. It is one of the Galapagos oh. Islands. Very good team. Yay! We did a... He's he's looking at us like we did well. Y- okay. Y- close enough. I don't know if you will remember the, the Mac- name of the title. McDouche or something like that. Was it a saint something? At the time, it was Charles Island. Yes. Oh, that sucks. But it has been renamed between that story and this story, which I also mentioned on the episode last episode, Floriana Island. Floriana. Oh, That's beautiful. much better than Charles. A beautiful name. No, beautiful I, I name. like Charles. Love Charlie. Love it. But <laughs> Charles Island. <laughs> you pretty big admission early in the episode. Yeah, well, going, you love Charlie. Going out on a, on a limb there that you love Charlie. You work Charlie. for the public broadcaster and you <laughs> I guess you are a cool youth station and you can talk in that way. But The name, Charlie. Oh. All right. Love well, you lo- the name, Charlie. End of sentence. Okay. But Charles Island sucks. But Floriana? Great. It's a great word. I, I'm going on a holiday to Floriana Island. Well, you could. Hey, guys, I've got a few bags of Flory if anyone wants to party <laughs> with me. <laughs> now, this topic uh, was the one I was originally researching when I read about the Essex and decided to make it, in some ways, a two-parter. So this topic was suggested by Peter Kyensler from Springfield, Illinois. Apologies if I've... Uh, Screwed up your name there. Is it? It could be Sprungfeld. Yeah, I think it's Illinois <laughs> Han Sprungfeld, and uh, also Keith J. Ross from Cork in Ireland. Thank mm. you to those two listeners. Appreciate that. Cool. So Floriana Island is named after the first president of Ecuador, Juan Jose Flores. It was previously known as Charles Island, named after Charles the Second, King of England. Now what's the, what Charles? Blech. An it's island. A, it's a boring name for an island. Like yeah, exactly. Islands have to be a bit jazzy, don't they? Yeah. You know? If you're gonna know yeah. Anything that's a Although, first name outside of Gary, just I don't know if that would normally work. We've got a Phillip Island. <laughs> I never really thought about it. That's very dull. It sucks. I've never thought about it either. It's yuck. Phillip Island. No good. I don't know. It still feels better than Charles, but it probably would have a similar it would be named after someone like that, right? Sure. Probably Arthur Phillip. Arthur Phillip. Uh, it is an island that is part of the Galapagos Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, this is the island that the Essex stopped in in my previous report and grabbed hundreds of giant tortoises, well remembered, Jess, yes. before setting fire to the entire island in a prank gone wrong. Oh, <laughs> Still makes me laugh. So dumb. What a great prank. They got so him. So dumb. Good. Like, oh. Psych. <laughs> started a fire. Oh, oh it is spreading. Oh, oh, oh God. No. Yeah, I meant to do that. Ah, prank. Pranked, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sucked in, island. Uh, you're burnt. Uh, so that was in 1820. Uh, one of the areas of the island is called Post Office Bay. Now that <laughs> I enjoy. Because since the 19th century, a wooden barrel has kept to mark as a, a post office. And it's used as a post box where ships occasionally stop by to pick up mail. Huh. Uh, these days, cards and letters are still placed in the barrel without any postage, and visitors to the island go through the letters and cards in order to deliver them by hand. Huh. So you can go through and be like, oh, Melbourne, I might be going through there soon. You grab that letter and you drop it off to oh, that's Jose cute. Flores of one Wembley place. Okay. Is that where <laughs> he lives? Yeah. Probably shouldn't know. So his address out there. <laughs> so that is luckily you didn't give away the suburb. So yeah. he didn't mention that it was thank... Hawthorne. Oh, thank God I didn't say it was Hawthorne. <laughs> uh, so that, that's the previous story and a bit of background. Our story this week starts proper in Germany in the 1920s. Ooh, I like the 20s, the flappers and the do do what's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, not a great time towards the end of the 1920s in Germany in many ways, but Hmm. throughout this decade, with war on the rise, that's what I was talking about, (laughs) small groups of European settlers began to migrate to several of the Galapagos' larger 15 isles. With the Second World War in two decades seeming pretty much inevitable at this point, there's not much wonder that many wanted to get away from Europe. Hmm. The Ecuadorian government, the country in charge of the Galapagos Islands, were struggling financially and were happy to have the settlers. Mm. In fact, to encourage them, settlers were invited to enjoy free plots of land with hunting and fishing rights and didn't have to pay tax for the first 10 years. What? Free land? So free land on a tropical island away from war. To many, it sounded like paradise. Oh, no. It does sound like paradise, which I'm going to then guess means something's going to go wrong. Uh Uh-oh. Am I right, Dave? 
You're not wrong. Was Ooh. this an early version of the Fire Festival? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were tweeted that you were watching the documentary on it a little while back. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it's a wild story. It's such a massive fuck up on so many levels. Mm. Amazing. I love a clusterfuck. Yeah, it is one of those. Yeah. And you I, just watch it slowly happening. Can I tease this story and say that this is a fuck up on so many levels? Yeah. <laughs> I had a funny feeling. <laughs> the original oh. Fire Festival. Well, so to many people, this fire festival sounds like paradise. So one yeah. of the people that it sounded like paradise to was a German doctor in his mid forties called Frederick Ritter. Ritter, Frederick, Fred Ritter. Ritter. I don't mind it. Yeah, great uh, name. Uh, together, he and his lover Dora Storch, mm. Dora Storch, who was fifteen years his junior, decided to give up their lives in Germany and move to the Galapagos. <laughs> Are we laughing at Dora Storch? <laughs> Just say it quicker, it's funny. Dora Storch. That's pretty funny. (laughs) I just think her parents didn't really think that through, you know? Like, sure, you liked the name Dora, but you didn't pair it with your surname to see how it all sounded. Yeah, what are your parents with Storch, though? Yeah. Pick a name that sounds great with Storch. Jennifer. Jennifer Storch. Much better. Dora Storch. Stupid. Yeah, that's true. But I like how stupid it sounds. Dora Storch. Sounds like you're saying Dora's torch. Oh, I was thinking. <gasps> Does she set fire to the island? Is it a clue? <laughs> is it a clue, Dave? Yeah, this is. I I'm, I'm want you to solve this mystery. <laughs> Can you jump in with uh, some theories? Some early, early ideas. Pretty early on. <laughs> so they decided to move to the Galapagos together. The two at this time were married to other people. Okay. Okay. But had met when Dora was a patient of Dr. Ritter's. Oh, no. I hope she didn't have anything weird. <laughs> Well, she had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or MS, Mm -hmm. a condition that even now there is no known cure. So back in the 1920s, didn't have uh, great medicine for it. I was just hoping she didn't have herpes or something and and then they fell in love. (laughs) All right. Regardless. Wait, why did you hope that? Sure, he'd be in a great position. He goes, hey, you got herpes, but I love you anyway. Oh, that's nice. I love love. I love you. I love herpes. I've said too much. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to find someone who'll accept me, herpes and all. <laughs> okay, so she's got MS. So she's got MS, which right. affects the nervous system. Mm-hmm. But Dr. Ritter told his patient that with the right frame of mind and environment, she could overcome her condition. <laughs> Basically, she could will herself to get better, which is absolute bullshit, but she believed him because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he's a doctor. He was yeah, like, you would. the cure is, uh, sorry to be inappropriate, uh, but we're going to have to bone. <laughs> it's the only cure. I have a magic dick. I have a magic dick. <laughs> that, wasn't that, we did an episode where a guy went around saying he had a magic dick. <laughs> oh. The hundredth episode, I think it was the hundredth episode was about Ra- a guy Ra- with Rasputin. Rasputin had a magic dick. <laughs> magic dick. Which apparently someone's still got in a jar somewhere. Ooh. And yeah. it's big. And a magic. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the double you want. If you want to get the genie out of the bottle, you really got to rough it. <laughs> <laughs> so, doctor says, if we go to this place together and yeah. get in the right frame of mind, you'll overcome this illness. Yeah. Frederick himself was a devoted student to the teachings of German philosopher Frederick Nietzsche, who wrote, "Quote: To live is to suffer. To survive is to find some meaning in the suffering." End quote. So, both Ritter. Dr. Ritter and Dora hated the idea of domestic life and wanted to experience something more meaningful and hoped by living a life of solitude away from material possessions that they could get more meaning in their suffering. Hmm. That's their, that's the aim of this whole exercise. That's a good aim. Someone said to me recently that I don't talk about tism enough anymore. I used to, everything I would bring back to tism in early episodes. Then you mentioned Nietzsche. <laughs> they had an early song, an early demo song that was called... Um, I'm going to see a Nietzsche double feature. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. That is good. Huh? It really rolls off yeah. the tongue. Genius. Beautiful. Real G- good. Genii. Genii, sorry. <laughs> uh, Dora was devoted to the doctor and before they left, ominously wrote in her diary, quote, fr- quote Frederick is my... Sorry, quote. <laughs> well, it's quote. Uh, that's how Germans say quote. Right. No, it's not. No. Dave, don't try and fool us. Sauerkraut. <laughs> she sauerkrauted. Quote, Frederick is my guide and my teacher. Frederick is my fate. Oh. And sauerkraut. 
Sounds like a cult of two. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah basically, he's a cult leader. And- he's not that charismatic, but enough for one person. Because <laughs> yeah. I reckon it would take a lot of charisma to get heaps of people on board and keep them on board. But if you can just get one dummy to just love you so much and do everything you say, I mean, that's the dream. I mean, that's a relationship. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I guess that is. I mean, a toxic relationship. That's it? funny to think what? of relationships as, as mini cults. Yeah. Yeah, just a little cult of two. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's nice. I love that. I was always like, I mean, let me know where you are at all times and what time you'll be home and, ah. Oh. You have that, like, weddings are sort of a cultish ceremony in itself. Yes. And, yeah, it wow. makes sense. You keep cyanide in the fridge just in case. Yeah, that's cultish. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Galapagos was chosen as their destination of choice for this uh, suffering camp because <laughs> naturalist William Beebe had described the Galapagos as the end of the world. So that, oh. that sounded like, oh, that's the right place to go for us. We want to go to the end of the world. So they took off. They left their respective spouses behind in Germany with instructions to take care of each other. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's so weird. That weird. Just leaving you a letter. was like, hey, I'm leaving... And I'm going with this woman, but... There's a guy, there's a guy. across town. <laughs> yeah. Can he knows, you look after him? Just check in on him. <laughs> he knows how you're feeling right now. Yeah. Just check in. Maybe, you know, cook him a meal or something. All right, bye. And those two people were Elizabeth II and <laughs> Philip, the husband of her. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, the husband of her. That's how they got together. Yeah. Who Can you believe you? it? <laughs> Not many people know They that. both got ditched. Yeah. Both of them were married to royalty. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. they ditched him for hell. Yeah. Dumb. The end of the world. Mm. <laughs> love is love. History is history. Yeah. Yeah. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> they took a four-week boat ride to Ecuador. Then they had to wait another month to be able to find a boat that would take them to the remote Galapagos. But finally, they made it to Floriana, a completely uninhabited 173 square kilometre or 67 square mile island. That just means nothing to me. I can't. I can't. Compute that. Oh, is so that it's big? very big. Yeah, oh, it's, it's quite a big for an island. Big, quite that's big, a big for, for an island. island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe yeah. this yeah. might make sense. So their closest neighbours from this island were sixty miles away by boat. Right. Yeah, but I just want to know how big the land. Sometimes when we used to go canoeing in the Murray River, we'd say we found an island, and it was just like a little bit of sand with maybe a tree in it, and we'd be like, "Oh, on an island." Okay, so it's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger. It's not like one of those cartoon deserted oasis islands with one palm tree and a couple of coconuts. Like it's a reasonable size. It's like the size of a a Melbourne suburb, I'd guess. Cool. Got it. But which one? Just Uh, so I can picture it. And then Burwood? Okay. And now do every other major city for all the listeners. So it's like the size of Burwood. So they've got a 24 hour Kmart. (laughs) I got that shopping complex. Oh, it's way bigger than Burwood. Burwood's only 8.7 square kilometres. What? Dave, you fucked it. I also don't know the scale. I'm just making this up. I love that, though. Thank you for... No, but I, I got a picture in my head. Yeah. You know? It's big enough How many Burwoods is I it? can have my shack over here. Just imagine, like... Uh... You can have your shack over there, and I don't have to see you. Yeah. It's like five or six Burwoods. Yeah, it's like five or six Burwoods. It's like 30 Burwoods. 30 Burwoods. Burwoods is our new unit of measurement. <laughs> Let's get back to the story. Anyway, they found this giant Burwood-like paradise. They explored the island and settled in a valley an hour's walk inland next to a spring that could supply them with fresh water. They called their new home Frido, combining the words Frederick and Dora. Oh. oh. Frido. Oh, we had different reactions there. You almost thought that was cute. Uh, no, I was just like, oh, I was sure that was like a freedom thing. Frido. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Frito! Frito, hey! Hey! I'm Freedom here! <laughs> so they finally made it to their destination that they've been dreaming of for so long. But it was a very tough life. Hordes of feral animals like goats and cattle left over by pirates or earlier settlers and greeted them and were eager to share the produce of their garden. It's nice that they, they greeted them. Brought them around a pie? It's like when you, start, <laughs> when you start a new game of The Sims, um, your neighbours come over and say hi. Um, so you get to meet a few people like straight away. That's nice. Have I told this story in the pod before? I don't know if I have when I met my neighbour. No. So I live in an apartment uh, on the third floor. There's only two apartments. So he he came over one night. He was just walking around. He was quite drunk. And he came over to thank us for picking up his girlfriend's pot plant that had fallen in the wind on their balcony. 
We had not picked up the fuck Oh, I love that. Did you take he credit? Hey, I just want to, he's an American guy. I just wanted to tell you, thanks so much for that. Thanks so much. <laughs> and then I'm trying to be like fun. It's and, Elvis. I'm trying to be like fun and friendly. So I say at the end, like, oh, it was great to meet you. Um, now we've met. If you, I wanted to say, you know how you have that joke with a neighbor, if you ever need to borrow a cup of sugar. Yeah. I said, uh, if you ever want to come around for some sugar, <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, he was really, he sort of looked at me like, what the fuck? And then his girlfriend came out and sort of rescued him, was like, no, we got to come back inside, come back. Got it. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, my God, I think I just propositioned my neighbor. <laughs> Wait, you made it sound like the girlfriend was about to save it, but she just took him away and yeah. didn't save it at yeah, all. Yeah, but I think that he was, that like, she saved uh, the awkward moment. Yeah, right. Because it was just like him looking at me like, what the fuck did this guy just say to me? If you ever want to come around for I, some sugar. So when I moved into uh, my apartment, our neighbour came over with a packet of Tim Tams <gasps> because he put some rubbish in our bin. Oh, that's nice. What, just to say thanks? I think so. Did you notice that really there confusing. was some rubbish in your bin? In our bin that was already out to be collected. It was not affecting not me in any way. That is a, that's like, so sweet, It's a though. conscientious man. Yeah. I like that, though. I was very confused. Let me just ask you this. Did you give him some sugar? <laughs> yeah. Just well, say I, thanks. I certainly put it on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped my towel. And <laughs> I said, oh, sorry, let me pick this up. And, uh, and you, you bent down real slow. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about feral animals yeah. welcoming them to the island. That's nice. Uh, the uh, the Ritters, as I will refer to them, because they she would uh, Dora would often refer to him as her husband, even though they weren't married. But so I refer to them as the Ritters. Tried to keep the hungry animals away, but only had a bird gun, rat poison, and dynamite. That were their three options. Okay, so you can only kill <laughs> birds, rats, and dinosaurs, <laughs> and mites. Mites, yeah. Uh, their attempts to shoot poison and explode the wild hogs, which are the, you know, most explode annoying. Explode the wild <laughs> hogs. Oh, <fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, duct tape this dynamite to this hog's back. <laughs> oh, God, it's running into the house. Oh, get out of there, piggy. He's coming in, getting a pat. Stop patting it. That pig's about to go up. <laughs> well, these were unsuccessful, but in the end, the dynamite made the hogs nervous enough to stay away. Wow, smart hogs. Love those hogs. They do say pigs are pretty smart. Smart as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Smarter than a dog, whatever. And very clean. Hmm. Apparently. Apparently. Stop projecting, Dave. Dave. You're the pig, not the pig. Yeah. Perhaps the pig was in you all along. Oh, God. Get that pig out of here, mate. <laughs> oh, get the dynamo. <laughs> I'm going to blow this shit out, <laughs> so to speak. Um, so they didn't eat meat. Staunch vegetarians, these two, and had to live off vegetables uh. and fruits grown from seeds they brought with them from Germany. Why That's are you like, saying, uh, well, I was like, I'm like, what's the problem? It sounds like food is walking up to their house. Yeah, but if you're not eating meat. If you're not eating it, that's not so handy. That's just annoying. Yeah. Okay. Well, prepare yourself for what is possible. You don't like pulled pork, but do you like exploded pig? <laughs> <laughs> Dave's saying prepare if, if yourself. The, but... If the pig died naturally from dynamite related reasons, surely you can eat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to slaughter it. With dynamite? <laughs> but if it happens to walk over the dynamite, I just put down over there. Put down with a bit of sticky tape on the top of it so when it walks over it, it attaches to the bottom I of the I just pig. accidentally rolled it down into the pig hole where <laughs> they all live, I assume. I dropped it. What's the problem with storing dynamite in a pig hole? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Oh, those poor pigs. <laughs> this is my dynamite hole. <laughs> They're, are they about to be exploded? You've got to Dave? shove it right in the pig hole. Dave, you were warning us of something. <laughs> okay. What's going to happen? Prepare yourself for what is possibly the most insane part of this story. Ooh. Of this, to be honest, insane story. It's quite early for an insane part too. I love that. Lucky they only ate fruit because before he left Germany, Dr. Ritter removed all of his teeth. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> he, he figured that it would be hard to care for them on the island anyway and reportedly also wanted to see if his gums would toughen up if they had to. So he just took out all of his teeth. So that was an experiment on himself. He wanted to see. What was his plan B? <laughs> Turns out they're not. I'll take the teeth back in. <laughs> Pop them back in, please. And when you say lucky they only ate fruit, like you can't bite into an apple <laughs> well, or even chew it if you chop it up. Well. Oh, my God. Dora, no. Dora, no. Dora still had her teeth. No. <laughs> but after a while, they started to rot, and the good doctor had to remove them using his gardening tools. 
Oh, he was smart to get him done early. I, he didn't mention the plan to her. She's like, they rock up to the boat on, like, to, they board the boat to get there, and he's like, "Hey, how are you? Huh? Hey, honey, good to see you." She's like, "Where the fuck are your teeth? Oh, didn't I tell you? I, I'm actually okay well, with there's him. There's no way to brush my teeth on the island. I'm okay with him taking out her teeth because when you said Dora had her teeth, I was like, she's gonna eat all of the food and feed him like a baby bird. I haven't sto- finished the story. Ah. Ritter had brought a pair of metal false teeth with him, but they only had one, so they had to share the metal false teeth to eat food with. That's smart. That's be- that's love. <laughs> that is so funny. Sharing false teeth. Can you pass your metal teeth? <laughs> Martin! <laughs> no wonder they rotted their diet was only fruit as well. I just eat basically sugar. sugar every day. Gross. Oh. At first, I was dubious about this teeth story because it actually wasn't mentioned at all in a great documentary I watched about this called The Galapagos Affair. But several articles online did, so now I do believe it, including the Smith- Smithsonian. So I'll link to all of those in the show notes and you can make of it what you will. But in my opinion, they're now sharing metal teeth. That's love. That's romance. Oh, after removing them with gardening tools. Oh. I mean, you're you a doctor. Could you not bring like a medical kit or something? You'd- I like how vague gardening tools is as well. What are we talking? Secateurs? <laughs> a rake. A rake. <laughs> One rake. <laughs> Let me. All right, I've got to break out the molars. <laughs> yeah, just like oh. a, a garden gnome. One of those three prong things that have and everyone's oh, shed yeah. for some reason. That's a- actually a nightmare. I mean, nobody likes the idea of getting teeth pulled. But, like, I got my wisdom teeth out and they, the dentist was like, yeah, I could definitely take these out in the chair. And I was like, no, no, put me under, thanks. I could definitely take these out with a rake. I could do this. He wasn't a dentist. <laughs> he, he, was, was, he was a gardener. He was a man on the He's street. A, that's, so you went under because you took forever to recover. Maybe yeah. you should have had him out in the chair, Bob. No. Listen to that dentist. No. He knows what he's talking about. No. He's a dentist. No. And a gardener. <laughs> Once again, no. He's a great gardener. Have you seen his lawn? <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, that thing. Well, I haven't seen not a tooth in sight in that long. Yeah, true. Fantastic work. True. So they're teethless, having a great time. They were supposed to live a life of contemplation in the isolation, but because they had to do so much manual labor just to get by, they didn't have a lot of time for that. Not a lot of meditation time. No, to be honest, because they You've just... got to make time. They're battling the elements. I'm hearing a lot of excuses here. Mm. They're not making no time. No teeth, no time. What's wrong? What's wrong with these Come people? Come on, mate. The island was not really a place for rest. Not surprisingly, with just the two of them and a lot of pressure, Friedrich and Dora fought a lot. Oh, trouble in paradise. That's where that phrase comes from. Uh, Yes, yes, it does. (laughs) 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 Have you seen my rake? (laughs) Uh, Frederick was... Friedrich, Frederick, all the same to me, was tough on his companion and never praised her in his letters back home to his family, only complaining about how she constantly disappointed him. Oh. <laughs> disappointed is a harsh oh, word too. Dora felt lonely and spent uh, her time and love on the animals, forming a bond with a donkey. <laughs> Sounds like no. oh, there was, Dora. I, I tried to rephrase that in so many ways it didn't imply she was fucking the donkey, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah, regardless. I just couldn't do it. That did not imply that she no, was fucking Jess went straight to donkey it town. Did. She's fucking the donkey. Forming or the a donkey's bond. fucking her. <laughs> so you hear forming a bond and you think fucking. I only form bonds with things that I fuck. <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. That, that rake, for example. Yeah. Uh, this further disappointed Frederick, who just saw it. Uh, as her flattering the animal within herself. When, she when, had an animal in... Oh, okay. Yeah, now a, that sounds like she's boning the donkey. The donkey. <laughs> uh, she longed for attention and he, to put it lightly, was a bit of a fuckwit. Yeah, he sounds like a real prick. You don't want to be alone with this guy forever. <laughs> but but, basically, you've decided to live here until you die with this guy. Could she go back? Uh, it would be difficult to have to wait a long time for a boat, and it was very expensive to get back. So right. I don't know what their financial. And also, she has was. no teeth now. So <laughs> I don't know what's the point. <laughs> Without teeth, what's the point? Get busy chomping. Get busy dying. Where Where were they from again? Germany. Germany. You can't have any of that beautiful German cuisine, like strudel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got uh, pork knuckle. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretzels, mm. which half a chicken. I'm just saying things that are, uh, were <laughs> on sale at Oktoberfest. <laughs> I think I've gone through all of them now. Fairy floss. <laughs> what did you eat? Just pretzels? I, I lived on pretzels. Fuck yeah. Loved them. I love pretzels. Big pretzels. So mm. good. Big pretzels, big beers. Yeah. I felt like a tiny little child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little man. 
<laughs> That's how Dave feels always. Yeah. You hand Dave normal size cutlery and he's like, oh, I'm a big boy. Yeah, you give me a mini pretzel and I'm like, what is this giant food? <laughs> So they're sending letters home to Germany uh, via post office base. Every now and then a, a boat would come along and pick up the, the mail. And some of those were leaked to the press and sensational articles were written about this wild couple who lived alone and naked on this remote island. If I was Dora, I would put myself in the letterbox and wait mm. to be picked Take up. Take me home. <laughs> I'd put a little stamp on myself. <laughs> like, home, please. <laughs> and they'd think, well, she's deranged. Let's get her out of here. Is he be in that barrel? Yeah, floating in the bay. Is that? Oh, no, it's on a it's on a beachy sand bit. Oh right. Like, but um, yeah, it's got a little flag bobbing on it. in the ocean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she doesn't know when they're coming, but she'll be right. Uh, so because of these articles, they became minor celebrities back home. There were all these sensational articles written about them. After their newfound fame, they had their first visitor. A boatload of men led by oil tycoon Captain Alan Hancock dropped by. Oh, I love an oil tycoon. He was one of those, uh, which, well, I suppose we still we still have them these days, like... Um, Gina Reinhardt. I was going to say no, Gina Reinhardt. No, she's not oil. She's... No, uh, so he's one of the well, those people from the old school, like uh, Howard Hughes or someone who's rich and incredibly insane. Right. They were just... <laughs> You know, like a Richard Branson type. Like, I've got money, so I'm going to do something weird. Right. So that's this guy. I don't think Richard Branson's insane. Well, he d- but he does crazy adventures. Like, oh, I'm right. going to bloody water ski across the English Channel. Yeah, he does love to break some records, and that's that's insane to you. Some records. You, I mean, you hosted many world record-breaking shows, Dave, that's and right. you're from the affluent east. Is this in, a cry for help? It's, in, it's a cry for insanity. <laughs> it's a plea. But so he's one of those old school, uh, you know, um, oil tycoons. Uh, despite claiming to want to live a life of solitude, the couple welcomed the outsiders. Funny about that. Have, you know, they've been alone for a few months mm. together. And even dined on the boat where the captain, an accomplished cellist, played music that led Dora to tears as she thought it might be the last time she would ever hear music. Oh, that's so sad. The part in the news articles where it said they were nude. Mm. Are they nude? No, not completely nude. The gums are. Well, yeah, the yeah. nude gums. I mean, because of the, it's very hot at times on the island, so they would, not wearing much. wouldn't wear that much. But not like, but not uh, like completely naked. Do they have sunscreen back then? Yeah. So, so... It's pig's blood. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's why they're exploding them. Yeah. I will not kill the this animal protection. to eat it, but I will kill it to, to rub the blood on my just skin. Be, it just be sunburn this all the time. This pig is be SPF fun. 15 plus. <laughs> plus? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oh, they also accepted many supplies from the captain that would make their lives much more comfortable on the island. iPad. Remember? They're supposed to be these people that Cushions, yeah. don't want any of the luxuries of life. Right. But, but then when someone's like, hey, do you want this? They're like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Back home in Germany, married couple Heinz and Margaret Wittmer, or Wittmer, read about the doctor and Doris and decided that they too would like to try their hand at finding a paradise. They took their young son Harry and headed off to Floriana. Oh my oh, god! Poor Harry. <laughs> Harry, no. Harry was sick, so a preteen. I think she was about ten or eleven at this time. Was sick and wanted, and that had been his whole life. They described him as a uh, being a little fragile, and they wanted to give him a healthy quote Swiss Family Robinson existence. Yeah, he's a little pussy quote. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just don't think going to an island with nothing around is what you should Gonna do to someone. <laughs> Yeah, but I imagine, you know, it's a paradise island. There's probably a big hospital there as well. Yeah, nearby. heaps of uh, friends for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's, help, help grow his confidence. That's really fascinating that I wonder how long they thought about it, you know, before they made that decision to just pack up everything and move to an island. Well, when they arrived, the Whitmers, they wondered if they'd made a mistake. They got there and the island, it's not like a tropical paradise exactly how you'd imagine it. Hmm. I'm um, imagining it... like banana lounges and cocktails. Is it not like that? It's not like that. Ah, oh. there's only hammocks. But at least the hammocks. But the, they'll deliver your drinks to do the hammocks. Do they bring the, yeah, the, bring the cocktails out? Of course. And do they not fill it so much so that when you're swinging in the hammock, hammock, it doesn't spill? Yep. They think of that. That's oh, true. I love that. Or they give you your drinks in sippy cups. Ergonomic hammock. Love that. But so it's not one of those uh, a typical tropical paradise island that you would imagine. So it's a volcanic island. And, yeah, you had to sort of go an hour's walk at least into the island to find somewhere where you could set up camp. So you can't, you're not exactly sleeping on the beach and, you know, living right. a, a Fiji existence. Uh, so they got there. They're wondering if they made a mistake, but 
but just to get there, they'd sold everything they own and they didn't have enough money for a return journey. So they oh. couldn't back out now even if they wanted to. Oh. They had hoped, the Whitmers, that they'd be welcomed with open arms by their fellow German settlers who had been on the island a couple of years by this point, but the welcome they got was anything but warm. Oh, dear. Margaret Whitmer was also five months pregnant. Oh, my God, Margaret. And the family had specifically chosen this island to settle because it had a doctor on it. When they told Dr. Ritter this, he was furious. It's like he, I mean, they've clearly chosen to live by themselves yeah. in the middle of nowhere. But he settled here to get away from th- that sort of life. Yeah. And he did not want to be someone's personal doctor. So he was pissed off and told him, I'm not going to help you. Oh. Also, they didn't read and worship Nietzsche, so that was a black mark against their family name. Oh. Dora immediately did not like Mrs. Whitmer, who she sensed was someone who would dedicate themselves to housekeeping, the very thing she despised. She saw her as a classic housefrau, <laughs> yeah. a, a housewife of sorts, and she was like, well, this is the exact thing that I've tried to get away from, and you're... Yeah, they didn't want domestic in. life, yeah. and these people are so domestic. You're a bit of a domestic <laughs> goddess. But it's sort of weird. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we want to live that domestic life. In the bush somewhere. Oh, no, that's right. You think they'd arrive and you'd be like, oh, at least we're on the same page, kind of. Yeah. Uh, Rather than set up camp near them, Dr. Ritter took the Whitmers a tough hour-long walk away from them (sighs) and uh, showed the Whitmers some old caves that that had once been lived in by pirates and told them that they should set up in there. Whoa. So they thought they'd form this new community with the two families and maybe more because, you know, they're German. Yeah. They're from the same place. They could get on. But no, he was like, no, you go an hour over there and live in a cave. Adelaide's a bit like that, I think. Big German settlement. Oh, yeah, they have that. Lots uh... of people living in caves. Yep. It's Adelaide <laughs> And caves. there's at least an hour walk between each house. Yeah. The streets are very long. Long streets there. Yeah. Everyone loves their privacy. I respect that. Oh, it's an hour if you walk really slowly. Yeah. Uh, despite being sent away from the others, the Whitmers ne- uh, really nailed the island life and were actually much better at living off the land than Dr. Ritter and Dora anyway. They could grow and farm their own fruit, vegetables and meat. The other couple, however, seemed to rely on supplies dropped off from boats every few months, <laughs> despite their longing to be alone at all times. So they were living on handouts. And the Whitmers, so they told to piss off. Is that because they got them far enough away from the animals eating the, their produce? Or? No, I think... Um, uh, Heinz Wittmer just turned out to be a sort of... A, he knew how to build a yeah, fence around just knew, a, well, he just knew He just knew how to live off the land a lot better than the others and sort of just became a bit of a Bear Grylls type. Oh, I was drinking his, drinking his piss. That was the key, the secret. That's all I know about Bear Grylls. Huh. Probably one thing he did one episode. Or is that something he does all the time? I've seen him do it a few times. All right. I've enjoyed it every time. Yeah. Does he, like, he just pisses, like, up in the air into his mouth? That's uh, usually into some sort of canteen. Oh, yeah. Why just he, cut out the middle, man, Does mate? he then filter it at all? Can you filter it? What do you do to piss? Drink it. Right. Sorry, stupid question. <laughs> Thank you. As soon as it came out of your mouth, I knew you were thinking, God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think Anytime I say anything. If you ever doubt that, then you're an idiot. Anytime I speak, in my head, I'm going, shut up, idiot. I, I, there's the do go on wisdom account where they tweet out quotes. I really hope that one of them is, can you filter piss? <laughs> Jess Perkins, episode 172, 73. Well, I think it was, what do you do to piss? <laughs> oh. uh, neither couple was alone for much longer because just two months later, a lady arrived on the island calling herself the Baroness. Oh, I like her already. She was on a donkey and <laughs> carrying a revolver. Yeah, that's the first they saw and then her, Dora she's... was like, "That's a hot donkey you got there." <laughs> <laughs> oh, mind if I take your donkey for a spin? <laughs> I like the look of that donkey. <laughs> the Baroness. The Baroness. His real name was Eloise Bosque de Wagner Verhorn. Yes, Eloise. She was an Austrian who claimed to have royal ancestry, and that's why she called herself the Baroness. Right. Love that. And that's why she moved to an <laughs> island nowhere near where <laughs> where she had any power. <laughs> She was accompanied by Rudolf Lorenz and Robert Philipson, her two German lovers, Ooh. and announced that she had come to establish a hotel for millionaires on the island. <laughs> yes! Her lovers would also double as the architect and engineer for the hotel. What convenient choices in lovers she had made. <laughs> 
Without any discussion, she decided that she would be living in the Orange Grove right next to the Vitmers stream. She went to the stream and one of the men she was with took off her shoes and she began to wash her feet in the Vitmers drinking water in front of her. Okay, she sucks. So that's one family pissed off. She then went round to Dr. Ritter and sat in his deck chair uninvited and demanded a cup of tea whilst telling them that she wanted to turn the island into a Miami for millionaires. Ritter, anti-capitalist and all, despised this idea. She was planning to ruin his solitude with the very thing he was trying to escape. They basically told her to fuck off. (laughs) She was enraged at their disrespect. She's incredible. She's she's pissed off them. She is my queen. I love her. Oh, this is your drinking water so I could wash my feet literally anywhere else except right here? (laughs) Nah. I'm going to wash my feet right here. I mean, he's already taken my shoes off, so. I don't don't like her. Wow. That's controversial, Matt. I can't see why not. (laughs) Well, she just seems a little off. I think she'll grow on you. She sounds to me. A little rude. What do you think? I'm sorry to use that language. I think you're being a bit... Put it away, mate. A bit precious. <laughs> what do you think Dora thinks of her? I think Dora... That's that donkey. I want to say Dora hates her, but I think maybe Dora likes her. Well, she disliked the Baroness immediately, but oh. wrote that she liked her more than Mrs. Vitma, who was nothing more than a housewife. Okay. She respected her at least and said, quote, even as an enemy, she is a person worthy of one's steel. Right, okay. So she respects. At least she's not a housewife. Basically, that's what she wrote. Wow, Dora, get off your high donkey. The Baroness called Nothing, nothing. No, I think it's a good point. You two can go fuck yourselves. Well, maybe we will. (laughs) Uh, The Baroness called a camp where she planned to build the future hotel, the Hacienda Paradiso. More like Hacienda Paradiso. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) She claimed the island for herself and did not like when outsiders arrived. There was a story that went around that she she was also a great self-promoter. So this story possibly also was told by her to give herself a bit of a rep to the outside world. A story goes around that a honeymoon uh, honeymooning couple cast adrift in a small boat from another island landed on Floriana. The Baroness refused them aid and forced them back out to sea again to an unknown <laughs> conclusion. She may have... Told that story. Herself. She may have told that story. Maybe to to give herself a rep and to make people not want to arrive on the island that she wants now to claim for herself right. to become a multimillionaire. Two Norwegians who lived on a nearby and much larger Santa Cruz island arrived one day to go hunting and shot one of the wild cows on the island okay. that had been there from previous settlers. The Baroness uh, appeared and claimed that they had shot her animal and chased one of the sailors with a gun and threatened him, claiming that she now owned everything on the island. How is that? How is she claiming that? She's she's claiming it by pointing a gun at him, saying, that's my cow, get the fuck off. She's so, actually a psycho. So there's there's no laws necessarily? No. Is this is part of Ecuador? It's part of Ecuador, but... There's obviously there's no police force here. Yeah. She yeah, she so has So someone nothing. could kill her. Someone probably does kill her. Someone could kill her. Yes. Ooh. So, oh, it's, this feels like it's I mean, if you're one of those, especially the first people there, you'd be like if you're threatening us with guns, this is going to escalate, I would have thought. Well, when Dr. Ritter found out about this, about how she chased some Norwegians who he actually personally knew, one of the guy reportedly when she chased him, appeared at Dr. Ritter's camp with his clothes all messed up because he'd travelled across land to get away from her. His clothes were ripped to shreds and told Dr. Ritter what had happened. He wrote a letter reporting the Baroness's behaviour to the local governor, hoping that he'd come and be like, you can't do that here. There's also stories of the Baroness shooting donkeys for fun and nursing them back to health. Basically... (sighs) She sounds like a terrible person. Yeah, she's uh, a sociopath. I'm warming to her. <laughs> but, but because of her spreading rumours about herself, it is hard to know what is exactly true and what isn't. But but what weird rumours to start about yourself? Like that is... I would start a rumour that I was super nice. <laughs> I hear she's really nice. Well, you know that the old thing? There's no, no such thing as bad press. And she got in the papers back in Germany too because of all these stories. Because she was really nice. Ki- nearly killing a donkey just to nurse it back to health yeah, is that's, pretty bizarre. Yeah, that's very odd. Hey. Like some cogs aren't quite turning properly in her head, you know? Like that's, that's... I mean, either way, it's weird. If she's doing it, that's obviously <laughs> fucked. If she's telling people she's doing it, possibly even weirder. Yeah. Uh, over at the Vitmers camp, pregnant Margaret began to give birth. 
over 72 hours. No. In the cave. No. At first, she refused her husband's office to go and get Dr. Ritter's help. After all, he had been very rude when they initially asked, and she said, I, don't want, I want to give birth to that, that guy. I don't need yeah. him. But then the blood and uh, pain became too much, and after 72 hours, she screamed oh. for her husband to go and get Dr. Ritter as she was worried that she and the baby would die. He came back with Dr. Ritter three hours later, and Ritter, to his credit, immediately went into doctor mode and delivered the baby. That's pretty good. Three hours isn't crazy long because it's an hour return, right? One yeah. One hour each way, so it... Took him, oh, it took him an hour, an hour to convince convincing. him. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> nah. Wow. Uh, it involved performing an operation without anaesthetic. Uh, Margaret successfully but gave... gardening tools. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> huh? Rake. Don't worry, I've done this before. I've, In I'll, Dora's mouth. I'll rake that baby out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret successfully gave birth to a son named Rolf. I would have called him Rake. <laughs> As a, a tribute. He comes out, the baby's first step is onto a rake. <laughs> <laughs> Such a bug. <bump. laughs> uh, Ritter, despite his initial reluctance, wrote of Margaret's bravery in his diary during the pain, painful birth and was very happy that Rolf was healthy. Well, that's nice. So he came around a little bit. Well, like, come on. You've got a very handy set of skills and someone's giving birth. 72 hours. Oh, God. Oh, no. God. 72 hours. And obviously when it's... Or horrible enough when you're on drugs and in a hospital, which most people have these days for 72 hours sometimes. But you know it's going to be okay because you're in a clean yeah. environment surrounded by professionals. But she was alone in the cave for a while. Why didn't they wait? Like if she was already five months pregnant when they got there, I suppose they, they would have known she was pregnant before they left, right? So just stay, have the baby, then go. Then go. I know. But not a great time in Germany. Maybe they really felt like they needed yeah, to get away. Uh, the Baroness was also pleased by the news and arrived to give the baby boutique clothes. <laughs> Dr. Ritter and Dora also gave presents to the baby and momentarily the three parties on the island got on very well. Aww. It seemed like the that the birth had brought them together and that maybe they could be friendly after all. Oh, Dave, I feel like you're saying that just to to bring us to give us some false hope. No, end of report. They lived <laughs> oh, together after. Oh, yay! They became... Great friends and even better lovers. Oh. Uh, no, they then had another visit from the cello-playing eccentric oil tycoon, <laughs> Captain Hancock, who was pleased to meet the island's two newer parties, and he invited them all aboard his boat, where well, they all immediately began to quarrel. Okay. And they spent the rest of the afternoon keeping them the three parties separate. Okay. You now at a wedding when you're told, like, you better keep Auntie Mary away yeah. from Cheryl because they do not get along. Yep. Yeah, it's that. But, but- all of them. <laughs> But that, yeah, like that, the all of the guests you've yeah, invited. Every guest you're like, <laughs> you have to oh, keep them in different keep, rooms. Right, we've invited 80 people to this wedding and no one can talk to each other. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> I can't wait for the speeches. It's going to be a magical day. <laughs> no one listened to the speeches. <laughs> uh, just like before, Captain Hancock gave Dr. Ritter gifts and supplies for his camp, and the Baroness demanded that they fairly distribute the gifts to all three of the camps. Ritter, seeing them as a gift for himself, cracked the shits. <laughs> Because they were a gift for him, but yeah, but yes, yes. The Baroness she was, like, was like, "I want it." Well, we all live here. You should give us. You should. We should all share that o- that lamp oil. Where is, does that logic come from? But also, you're a Baroness. Get I think your own lamp oil. The logic oil. comes from that she's a really selfish person. <laughs> she's a so- sociopath. Now, if you remember before, the governor of the Galapagos eventually arrived with soldiers to investigate the allegations made against the Baroness um. about the Norwegian hunter that she threatened with a gun. But like many other men, in the end, the governor was completely charmed by the Baroness uh, and gave her a title for four square miles of land to build her hotel. Oh. Meanwhile, he gave Ritter and Dora and the Whitmers only 50 acres each, a lot less land. The governor also declared that the Whitmer Spring can be used by both the Whitmers and the Baroness. So she got permission to hang around all the time and got more land than everyone else. Nightmare. Even though the whole reason that he was there was to tell her to stop threatening people with a gun. Right. Surely it's a baroness that we would split up this land equally between the three of us. Yeah, that's right. We had to split up those gifts before. Wow. So now she's got the land for her hacienda <laughs> and the others are more annoyed than ever. The baroness, it seems, had even grander visions and wanted to become a movie star of sorts. What the fuck? Like, pick one thing and do it. She's just doing everything. She convinced our old friend millionaire oil tycoon Captain Hancock to return to the island and shoot a short, silent film with her as the star. And boy, is it bad. 
I bet. It is on YouTube and you can watch it in its entirety. It is called The Empress of Floriana and goes for four minutes. That's too long. So he had so basically he funded the whole thing. He had to pay like a film crew to come along, which obviously was very expensive in the nineteen thirties. They had to go to the middle of nowhere on the boat. So he's really rich. He's crazy. He's like Richard Branson. Yeah, they sound like they're made for each other. <laughs> yeah. In the film, a married couple wash up on the beach and the Empress and her lover mess with the couple by shooting the wife on the beach. And when the husband arrives at their camp to ask for water, the Empress says Quote, it's one of those things where they're acting and then like a, a title card yeah. comes up with what, what the dialogue is. She says, that. first, you must do something for me. Ooh, and then it turns it's into a, a porno. porno. <laughs> well, that something is to kill her lover. So she shoots the husband's wife on the beach who was played by uh, one of the young cabin boys on the Oil Tycoon's Classic. boat. He's wearing a terrible blonde wig. And no. they actually shot him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like realism. <laughs> Too expensive to ship him back. <laughs> and then uh, the husband shot her lover, and the film ends with the Baroness and the husband making out behind a piece of cloth. So basically, it is a porno. <laughs> and it is an absolute uh, cinematic masterpiece, and uh, I suggest you watch it. <laughs> I don't oh. know what kind of porn Dave's watched. <laughs> <laughs> Two people making out behind a piece of cloth. Oh. Yeah, basically porn. Oh, baby. <laughs> Stop talking about it. You're going to get all <laughs> flustered. Oh, that's... That is hot stuff. He's gone all red. That is so so hot. <laughs> and his face is too. <laughs> Something about. So, so I've written here. So that's a bit of fun. <laughs> and you were right to write that. But for the most part, 1934 was not much fun on the island as it was filled with drought and an astonishing heat wave. The days were much hotter than usual and the rain that they relied so heavily upon just never came that year. Uh. The drinking water became low and plants and animals began to die off. Both the animals the settlers had brought with them and the local native wildlife. So you know you're in trouble when like the uh, the lizards and things on the yeah. island that have lived there <laughs> in harmony for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years and they're dying and you're like, oh, it's not just the Probably chickens. Probably not good. Yeah, the yeah. cactuses are starting yeah, yeah. to die. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. The vultures are dead. <laughs> yeah, they're circling just to die. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of supplies and horrible conditions brought even more tension to the island life and the Bacardis stopped flowing. The Bacardis? <laughs> and the parties began to clash, especially with the Baroness. One day, one of her lovers, Lorenz, appeared at the Whitmer's camp and told them that the Baroness regularly beat him and that he was leaving her. <laughs> Apparently, her other lover, Philipson, had become her favourite of the two. Right. A Huffington Post article said that she referred to him as, and I'm not making this up, what would you refer to your lover as, Matt? You will love this. A great nickname. Uh, booby. Booby. Tell me. <laughs> she referred to it... him as her booby. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hans. Booby. booby. <laughs> That's so You two good. have been saying that to each other for weeks. For weeks uh, now. When... Since the, oh, the yeah. Hard, yeah. <laughs> Since yeah, the Die Hard report. We did yeah. back in London and back in, in November. November. <laughs> Hans. Booby, which is a great moment in the Die Hard film. And I read this today when I was finishing up this report, just an extra little little fact, and I was like, that's the best part of the whole report. I, was, so I bit my tongue earlier because you said there was a guy called William Boob. I'm like, William, Booby. Booby. <laughs> <laughs> so Philipson is her Booby. How's that spelt? B-U-B-I. Booby. Booby. I'm assuming that that's, that's how you'd spell it, right? Yeah. I'm not, it's not Bubby. No. Booby. 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 So Booby is the favourite. Lorenz has left because she's beating him and not treating him well. That's like the right call. yeah. I feel like, yeah, I mean, you're probably not giving us the full picture, but it feels like a place you would want to be. No. No. I don't want to be there at all. You're not just giving us all the worst moments and the rest are just playing mini golf and drinking Chardonnay. Oh, they're having a great time. <laughs> That's my paradise. <laughs> mini golf is Chardonnay. I've never seen you drink Chardonnay. I've probably never. <laughs> or played mini golf. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's... Should we play? Should we go mini golfing? Yeah. That'd be really fun. I didn't say you were invited. <laughs> That's so awkward. I was looking to at you, that. To you, Dave, it would be normal golf. Um, yeah. To us, it's it's miniature. It's a novelty thing. Oh, I see. Do you want to come big golfing? <laughs> Hold on. Is that is that still mini golf for you? No, it's big golf for us, so extra big golf for oh, you. Okay. <laughs> we'll put you in the holes. <laughs> I love mini golf. It's so fun. 
All right, you can come. Do we go bowling as well? Yes. I'm terrible at both, but got to have a good time. Well, that's all that matters. So anyway, Lorenz is there complaining about Bobby. <laughs> Lorenz also, he also spilled the beans about the Baroness, telling the Whitmers that she was not, in fact, a Baroness at all. What? She had been married to a Frenchman named Bosquet. That's how she got her name who she left behind in Paris. Before the war, she was a dancer and had met her husband in Constantinople and also claims to them that she was a spy. She sounds batshit crazy. She had met uh, Lorenz. None of this is true at all. She had met Lorenz in Paris, so this bit comes from Lorenz, so it's you know, a bit more reliable. And together with L- Lorenz's money, they, the two had set up a boutique together in Paris. Philipson, the other lover, a.k.a. Booby, Booby. was hired as a salesman. That's right. how they all met. And oh. then they became a bit of a love triangle. Now on Floriana Island, Lorenz was the assistant to the others and was rega- regarded as just good enough to do the house chores and tend to the livestock. Basically, he was their slave. That's why he's cracked, cracked and left. But sadly, Lorenz returned to his lover each day and only came back to the Whitmers at night crying. Aww. So he was infatuated with her. This behaviour seemed to be one of many final straws and Hans Wittmer appealed to his neighbour, Dr Ritter, and said something had to be done about the Baroness. Not long after these events, in March 1934, one day Dora heard what she thought sounded like a woman screaming. She wrote it off as her mind playing tricks and at the time didn't think much more about it. Yeah, you would assume that you could hear someone (laughs) screaming. You'd think, oh, my mind's playing tricks. (laughs) The amount of times I convince myself that my mind is playing tricks. What's that noise right now? It sounds like my voice, but I think it's my mind that's playing a, tricks. That's a trick. Ooh. What fun. The following day, Heinz Whitmer didn't make his weekly visit to see Dr. Ritter as he always did. Always checked in once a week just to make sure. I must. Right. Yep. Still annoying to you? Yep. All right. Great. <laughs> great. All right. See you later. Catch you next week. Uh, morning, Doc. You still hate me? Great. I'll just walk the hour back then. I'll just keep walking. Yeah, you better keep walking. <laughs> but he didn't turn up the next day after this scream. Oh. Instead, Margaret Whitmer and Lorenz, the ex lover yep. of uh, non Baroness, <laughs> non boob, he and Margaret visited the next day and told them a story that, in Dora's words, sounded rather rehearsed. The story was that the Baroness had turned up to the Whitmer's camp looking for Lorenz and said that her and her other lover, Booby, were going to Tahiti with some friends that had arrived on a sailing boat and that Lorenz would stay behind and look after the camp. They were going to try and set up their hotel on Tahiti instead and sail it off into the sunset on this boat. Oh, that's great. Great. Well, that works out really well. So they've gone. Cool. So Lorenz has got the camp and... Yeah, now we're back to... I mean, he's alone and um, all the neighbours are assholes and he can't get back to civilization. But he has killed his ex-lover. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, no, so she's left. left. Well, Dr. Just Ritter. their bodies. He's like propped them up in a boat. He's like, oh, you can see them. They're floating away now. <laughs> they <go. laughs> They're <Bye-bye>. slumped over. <laughs> <laughs> They're on fire. <laughs> There they go. There they go. Oh, no, it's just your mind playing tricks. If you <laughs> nah, get... They're on just, fire now. This is the sun. That's the sun dancing off the waves <laughs> and their faces. Look, they're waving. <laughs> Dr. Ritter and Dora seemed very suspicious of this story. From where they lived on the island, they would have been able to see any sailing ship that had arrived and they hadn't seen anything. Of course they would. They're fucking desperate for ships to arrive to give yeah, them free Yeah, they stuff. want freebies. They're... You guys got show bags on that ship? <laughs> Show back. I want a Betty Beetle. I was going to say Betty Beetle. <laughs> There's a rule. You got to see if someone says show bag, you got to say Betty Beetle. Betty Beetle. <laughs> uh, I'd always go for a whiz fizz. Hmm. Fucking love that sherbet. Get it in me. Yeah. Mm. What is it? Yeah, it's like, it's like it's super, sugar. super refined sugar or. Is that all it is? It's got to be more to it because it's got that fizz about it. Yeah. That's the whiz, but what's the fizz? <laughs> All right, we know what the whiz is, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. Well, to quote Bart Simpson, there's no sugar in pixie sticks as he hands them to Rod and Todd mm. who go extremely hyperactive and then beat each other up. <laughs> so Dr. Ritter and Dora, they're very suspicious. They thought this might be a trick, so they visited the Baroness's house to see if it was a trick and she was indeed gone. Couldn't find her anywhere. But it appeared as though she'd left everything behind, even her prized possession, which was a copy of Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray that she carried with her everywhere was left behind. 
That was her prized possession. She carried that with her everywhere. Everywhere. How how old would it have been at the time? About 30 years old, Ah. 40 years old. And if you're wondering about the picture of Dorian Gray and what it's all about, then uh, then I'd love you to listen to the first episode of my other podcast, Book Cheat, with guests Nick Mason this and Mr. No. Sunday Movies. Shameless. This is no good. Absolutely shameless. When I read that there was a chance for a plug in this report, that really made me think I've got to do it. I tell you what, there better be some sort of monkey coming up. Yeah. <laughs> there better or I'll be. be furious. Or a chimp. Or a Pretty chimp, awesome. yeah. Chimp would be fine. I'll any, accept a chimp. Any primate. Thank you. Well, you'll have to settle with humans. Because we're looking for a primate to pop up in this show. Because Matt has a podcast oh. about primates in popular culture. It's called Primates. See, Dave, how does it feel when does somebody feel? just just shoehorns in a shameless plug? Well, it's gross, isn't it? Absolutely not. It's yuck. I threw up a little bit in my mouth saying it. Yeah. I will be deleting your plug. Ah, he's good. In the worry that it takes away from my plug. He's good. <laughs> so her stuff's there, even the picture of Dorian Gray, which... Better or worse is her prized possession. That's weird though. Like these days, we don't we don't have prized possessions. No, especially not as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. But like, I, I'm trying to think. Like, if I saw that you'd left something behind, I'd be like, "Huh, that's odd." Oh, It'd just weird. be your phones. Yeah, I guess. But I wouldn't even be like, well, "That's sus." I'd be like, "Oh, he's going to be annoyed." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> doesn't have his phone on him, and I can't let him know because he doesn't have his phone on him. It makes it easier in a house fire. You just go, "Ah, eh, that'd burn." Yeah. Yeah, not, these days, not many people are yelling out, oh, no, my copy of the picture of Dorian Gray is <laughs> yeah. in that fire. Even mm. photos and stuff, it's not really a worry. Yeah. Apart from old, maybe like your parents' or grandparents' photos. Did you leave any of them in there? Yeah, she left it off. She left it all. Wow. Also rather suspiciously, Lorenz, her ex-lover, immediately started selling the Baroness's supplies to the other camps, claiming that he was raising money to get off the island. He was like, do you want any of this stuff? Do they have money? Yeah, yeah they got. They, yeah, so they do have a bit of money. Why? Well, I guess so. They can buy stuff from passing ships. Right. I would. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, why don't look into it too much? You wanted her gone. Now you can buy some stuff. Yeah. Dora also noticed that the witness was sporting a new tablecloth that she'd seen before at the Baroness's house just a few hours after she'd quote sailed away. What a weird bit of bounty to steal. A tablecloth. tablecloth. And then to display it. Come on, guys. Just wait. Why do you have tables? <laughs> it's funny the stories like this and you, you're like these murderers and you're like, hey, guys, we all want you to get away with this murder. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I'm like, stop being an idiot here. You guys are being Use so- your head. <laughs> <laughs> Months later, the drought broke and a journalist arrived to do a story on the Baroness who he was told had disappeared. He broke the story to the world and it became a bit of a mystery with foul play heavily implied. So the Baroness is back in the headlines, probably not for the best reasons this time. No, as opposed to when she killed and then <laughs> nursed back to health a donkey. She probably didn't quite kill it, did she? No. Because that's good. That's worthy of That's how good she is. She's saving lives. In yeah. that case. Then she's an angel. Yeah. Lazarus, Lazarus Safai and that donkey. <laughs> Uh, the journalist was on a ship that agreed to take Lorenz off the island to the larger Santa Cruz island where it would be easier for him to get back to Europe, which he was desperate to do. Mm. As he was leaving the island, Lorenz whispered to w- w- Mrs. Whitmer, quote, I don't know why, but I'm afraid of this trip somehow, oh. end quote. Oh. oh, boy. Lorenz made it to Santa Cruz and saw a larger boat that could take him back to Europe and he pleaded to get on it. He was told it was Friday the 13th an unlucky day to sail, and that the weather was also very bad. Okay. Oh, he didn't care. Oh. He was desperate to get home despite the risks. No. I mean, the risks being th- the day is superstitious and the weather's real bad. The weather yeah, is. That makes more sense. More of the concern. But it, for, for many sailors, they have lots of superstitions. I guess, yeah, and superstitions, there is that sort of that effect of if it's in your head mm. and you're a sailor, you're controlling a boat and you think, oh, today's cursed. And it's stormy. Maybe you don't make the best decisions like mm. you would on Friday the twelfth. Mm. A very good sailing day. <laughs> you talked the captain into taking him, and they left Santa Cruz, and no one saw them for weeks. Mm. Captain Hancock, our millionaire tycoon, found their mummified bodies. What? On Marchena, a what? tiny Galapagos island that doesn't have any fresh water. 
They'd been marooned and died of thirst and had become mummified in the sun, wow. in the hot sun on the beach. Whoa. And I've seen footage of their bodies and they look really gross. Oh, my God. Yeah, so they would have had a pretty horrible death. They they don't know exactly what happened, but maybe the uh, engine had malfunctioned and that they'd been blown off course because it was actually in the opposite direction of where they should have been going and they washed up on this island, which there's lots and lots of islands around, but sadly they got to one that was uninhabitable and they would have just uh, uh, sat there and died. Shit. Oh, that sucks. So that's Lorenz. Lorenz is gone. So the three the three ways all all dead now. Yeah. Or at well, least... Some of them are in Tahiti, please. Right. Yeah, they're in Tahiti with friends. Building their hotel now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> doing it with, but they're doing it with a, someone like <laughs> using their limp, dead arms. Yeah, it's a week and a Bernie situation. <laughs> week and a Bernie. So that's a very easy shorthand way to describe <laughs> what I, I was trying to invent there. A whole new concept for a film. <laughs> <laughs> Long weekend at Bernie's. Oh, that's good. Meanwhile, back on Floriana, five months had gone past since the Baroness had disappeared and the drought had broken a little too late and the crops had failed, meaning that the staunch vegetarians Dr. Ritter and Dora were forced to eat meat to survive. They decided to take a risk and rather than kill an animal, they would eat some chickens that had already died in the drought. That's a risk. The couple even offered them to the Whitmer family, claiming that they had boiled the poison out of the dead chickens' bodies and that they should be safe to eat. Nope. The Whitmers said... Thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, we're happy to just to eat this. I yeah. thought, what I thought you were going to say was they didn't want to uh, kill any animals, so they just chopped a leg off <laughs> <laughs> bit by bit. Frederick Ritter only had a little of the chicken and Dora had the majority of the meat. Oh, dear. I imagine using the metal teeth. Plus, Dora had been really annoying for a long time, so if you're going to both eat some poison food, yeah, give her the majority. Just a few hours later, however, Frederick laid down and complained about feeling ill. Then he started vomiting and experiencing agonising pain. It became apparent that he was very ill and possibly dying. Dora wrote that she sat with him all night and at dawn he asked her to to read Nietzsche and he asked her to remember him by one of the lines. She realised that in the doctor's own opinion he was dying, so she went to get the Whitmers. And from here we have two differing accounts of what happened. Dora described what happened as thus. By the time Dora and Margaret Whitmer got back to the doctor, his tongue was so swollen he could no longer speak. She sat with him until the next morning when he suddenly sat up, put his arms out to her and had a a look of complete peace before falling back down dead. So that's Dora's account, a peaceful death where he was reaching out to her, saying goodbye. Margaret Whitmer, on the other hand, said that when they arrived at the camp, he was in excruciating pain. He grabbed a pencil and wrote out, out his final sentence, which said, quote, I curse you with my dying breath. <laughs> <laughs> and then looked up at Dora with, with angry eyes. <laughs> he was in pain throughout the night before dying. That's brutal. So, so two accounts there. Very different. Very different. One was like he loved me so much. No, Jess, you don't get it. That was a quirky thing they had. <laughs> <laughs> they used to curse each uh, other with their dying breaths all the time. It's that's how like... they showed their love and affection. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's beautiful. The Whitmers were happy to point out that it was also strange that both of them, Dora and Frederick, could eat the chicken and that Dr. Ritter would get ill enough to die and that Dora was fine despite eating more of the chicken. Yeah. She also wondered why Dora had waited so long to get help. Maybe they could have saved Dr. Ritter with earlier intervention, she thought. What are you going to do, Margaret? Hey, couldn't even have a baby by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> now you're the doctor, are you? Come on, Margaret. Unbelievable. It, does, it is a funny sort of thing, like, um, <laughs> why didn't you leave him? Why didn't you leave him earlier by himself? When you thought before you realized things were dire, it doesn't that doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah, leave him alone and go find two people who aren't doctors. Yeah, what are they gonna do? Hey, what, you're really good in the garden, right? Well, my husband's dying, huh? Could you <laughs> what could you maybe weed him or something? <laughs> yeah, weed him. <laughs> so now we both basically have two women both accusing the other of murdering one of the members on the island because Dora is heavily implying that the witness had something to do or at least knew what Lorenz did yeah. to the Baroness and her lover, and that now the Whitmers are saying, Dora, it's a bit sus that your your husband died and that 
You're fine. Yeah. If you, if you brought us around earlier, we would have chucked some mulch around him. <laughs> we reckon we could have got him back to good health. I would have watered him. Yeah, watered him. <laughs> Bit of manure. Some uh, blood and bone. Blood and bone. Yeah, that would help. That helps. Uh, let me just say that also the Baroness and Booby Booby never appeared in Tahiti and were never heard from again. They're 100% shot and buried somewhere on that island. Possibly. No, definitely. <laughs> Floated out to sea, or maybe yeah, maybe oh, yeah. I would have, I, for some reason I was thinking I'd bury them. But some, you're right. Some out the, to the ocean. There's apparently a type of wood on the island that's easy to get uh, that it burns hot enough to burn a human corpse. People have said. Wow. Uh, so they could have that is completely convenient. disposed of the body. That is very. Convenient. Someone who was definitely buried on the island is Frederick Ritter, the doctor. So he was buried by the Whitmers, and after this, Dora decided to head back to Germany. She'd lived on the island for about five years at this point. She's got no teeth. No teeth. She's back to Germany with her metal chompers. But does she have, so that whatever leftover money they have, she's got some enough to get back? Enough to, she, so she went home, yes, yeah, had enough money to get home. But she go back to her husband? That'd be fucked. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> Honey, oh, I'm Hans. His name probably is Hans. Hans, Bobby. <laughs> it would, would have been, I can only imagine it the relief to get back home after five years living like that. Horrific. Uh, this left the Whitmers as the sole inhabitants of the island. Who sound like they were also the only ones who were handling it particularly well. Although, I mean, the Ritters lasted five years. Yeah, it's pretty good, but mostly on the, on the, the handouts. handouts. Right. Uh, just a postscript as to what happened after this crazy period in their lives. This is just the end of the report here. After Dora left, an article written by Dr. Ritter before he died, accusing the Whitmers of having something to, the, to do with the Baroness's disappearance was published, and this meant that the Whitmers hated Dr. Ritter and Dora forever after that. Right. So if there was any chance of them, uh, obviously they're now living in different uh, sides of the world, but if there was any chance of them ever patching things up, that article was published accusing them of being murderers, and that sort of ruined all that. Right. Dora tried hard to publish her partner, Dr. Ritter's philosophical writings. He's written all these uh, philosophies down, but failed. She did publish her own account of her time on the island in 1935 in a book called Satan Came to Eden. Oh, okay. That's a great title. Which is the subtitle of the uh, documentary I watched, which I would, would suggest, The Galapagos Affair, Satan Came to Eden, which is a great title. Uh, she died in Berlin. This is Dora in 1943 from complications from her multiple sclerosis. Ah, uh, right. I forgot she had MS. Yeah, I mean it's but it's I hard mean, enough to live with proper medical care yeah. over many years. So she did extremely well to live in the middle of nowhere for five years on her own. Well, it was just all about her attitude, wasn't it? Correct, Jess. Yeah, her magical attitude fixes everything. Uh, Margaret Wittmer published her own book about the island in 1959. So they had competing books that basically implied the other one was a murderer, and after and thereafter refused to speak again about those events. Right. Put it in writing. I don't want to talk about it ever again. 59, that's a long time after. Yeah, so she stewed on it for a while. She lived on the island until 2000 when she died at the age of 95. What? Wow. Can you believe that? That Those kind of conditions and she lived till 95. Just she, sounds like, yeah, they were all over it. What about her kids? Uh, Harry, the older one, sadly he died in a boating accident in the 1950s. He wow. drowned. Uh, but then Rolf started a successful boat boating company. That was the the baby that was born yeah, yeah. after 72 hours. The Whitmers, as a family, built a hotel for tourists on the island and their descendants still run it today. What? Wow. As of a few couple of years ago, Rolf was still alive. And today the island has a population of about 100, so you can go to Floriana Island. What the fuck? And visit the family. That's wild. She lived to 95. I know, living on a deserted island. What Absolutely. a legend. Incredible constitution. And so what about her husband? Oh, he just lived on. I don't know. I can't Nothing tell you what, Yeah, yep. I can't tell you what year he died. <laughs> right. But, okay. Yeah. But they stayed together on the island. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they stayed, stayed there together as a family and just made a goal. For it. some reason, I was just assuming they would have left at some point. Too. No, but they no, they're still there. Whoa, that's cool. I did not know that. Yeah. So that uh, that's the story of uh, I guess the Baroness of Floriana. If of you went there, would it be all like German speaking staff and stuff, or? Uh, I, it... I saw an interview with Rolf, and he was speaking Spanish, I believe, in the huh. in the thing. But I imagine he probably speaks German as well. Yeah. Wow, I did not expect that coming. That end. Wow. 
So the Baroness is definitely dead, either burnt or buried or out to sea. She's 100% dead, I'm sure. Well, oh, definitely now. But I, think so. I was going to ask what you think happened. Yeah, yeah. no, I think. The- and do you think that Dr. Ritter was poisoned or it was just the chicken? It was just an unfortunate thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard, right? She was trying to publish his works, which make it seem like she didn't fully hate him, but I guess. Yeah, I reckon it's a, it was just chicken, bad chicken. I mean, we do. We're we're now experts on the topic, so we should have a pretty strong oh. firm opinion on this. Definitely the chicken. She just had the right bacteria in her gut. Yeah, didn't have the he didn't have the enzymes to mm. break up the meat from not eating meat for such a long time. That sounds that sounds medical. Let's go with yeah. that. <laughs> sounds really good. But what an absolutely crazy story! An amazing story. Well done, Dave. Thank you. And a part two. A part two to the. The other yeah. crazy story of the Essex, which if you haven't read, uh, haven't read, if you haven't heard me talk about a few weeks ago, that was also a, a can, wild story around, based vaguely around this island. Can you, yeah, can you just quickly explain to me the connection again? Oh, so the Essex was a, a hunting, a, a whale hunting ship from Nantucket in America, and it went to the middle of the ocean to get some whales. Yeah. They were all extinct in it, pretty pretty much every other part of the world at that point. So they had to go to the middle of nowhere. And on the way there, they stopped at Floriana Island. Right. Collected all those turtles and this, or tortoises. But, but this and, is before. Yeah, 100 years earlier, they were the ones. So that was the island that they'd set fire to. Right. And that had all regrown over 100 years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but when they left, it was like a blackened husk. Right. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I love so that. So that island has two crazy, crazy, like, yeah. st- like in a way, survival stories attached to it. I yeah. love how um, an island like that will just regenerate itself somehow. Mm. Yeah, because it's a volcanic island, so I imagine it's got good soil. Right. You'd know that as a very good doctor. Mm. Doctor of volcanoes. Yeah, gardener, sorry, gardener. <laughs> but that does bring us to the end of the report, and it is time, as always, to give thanks to a few people. That support us on Patreon. If you want to be one of those people, one of the great people in the world, you can go to patreon.com slash do go on pod. And in exchange for a bit bit of a donation every single month, you can get bonus stuff like two bonus episodes that no one else hears, which we've been putting out and having a lot of fun making over the last couple of years. A lot of those up there to check out. And you can get tickets in advance to live shows, shout outs on episodes, which we'll get to in a minute. But before that, Matt has a segment that he likes to call the fact quote or question. Fact quote or question. I should say, Dave, fantastic report. What a fascinating story. Can I just fantastic. say? Thank you so much. Grazie. Grazie. Uh, and bon- go. <laughs> bonus reports last month, I reckon, two of our best bonus uh, episodes for Patreon, including uh, Jess's report, which I think maybe is one of the funniest episodes we've ever done and it's just it's a bonus episode about the battle of the sexes and mm. we also did the patreon awards where we uh, awarded a few different awards including uh best episode best report give a best guest some it was a good fun time we all got on our bloody monkey suits uh monkey suits that makes that makes me think of <laughs> another podcast primates you should check it out very funny show we should uh, say that the battle of the sexes episode that we did put out as, as that bonus episode it was so fun and silly because we were recording it live in Birmingham at the Glee Club. And at the last minute, the tech had been a bit, you know, the audio stuff had been a bit dodgy. So it looked a bit like we weren't going to be able to put it out. So we kind of said back, I was a bit bummed. I was like, sorry, guys, couldn't get the recording working out. And we decided, well, if no one's going to hear it, let's just go out and have, have fun and have the silliest show we've ever done, which we certainly did. And we yep. said many times in the episode, well, this isn't going out, so we can say whatever we like. And then uh, we were able to give the audio to our good friend, Evan Monroe Smith from Gamey Gamey Game, who made it sound great. Yeah. yeah. He rescued it. And we thought, you know, we'll put it out for the Patreon people. They they can be trusted enough to hear those the ridiculous things that we were saying. All right. So, so if you sign stupid. up to... <laughs> Good, stupid. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> if you sign up to Patreon, though, that, that episode is still up there to check out. Um, and, yeah, I remember it laughing so hard during the recording. <laughs> um, probably la- never laughed as much as that. Anyway, <laughs> it's now time for the Patreon segment, which is called Fact, Quote, or Question. And Jess normally does a little jingle. Fact, quote, or question. <laughs> oh, it's heavy intense. <laughs> we need your attention. Uh, this week, uh, second time fact, quote, or question, <laughs> because there's not that many people in this section of the Patreon, you uh, are more likely to get uh, come around again. Uh, this time it is Christopher Sheiky, a.k.a. Freaky Sheiky. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Freaky Sheiky. Freaky Sheiky in the house. <laughs> uh, and he has 
asked a question. Listen. So is that the title he's gone for? Yes. Or they give themselves a title. Yeah, that's right. They give Love themselves that. a title. Last time he said something real weird. And he called himself the lady killer or something like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, said, it was like, oh, hang on. Now I've said that out loud. All right. Yeah. yeah. What well, was he? The lady? Yeah. Lady killer? Lady stalker or lady something? Lady killer. Lady killer. <laughs> <laughs> like, so are you killing women? <laughs> or do, are you like, you picking up the ladies? Because both... A gr- One's worse. <laughs> hey, you know what? Freaky Shaky, I love it. Let's Freaky go with that. Shaky Freaky Shaky is, is very great. I uh, did. He did uh, clarify, maybe privately, that it was because uh, he does very well with the ladies. Uh-huh. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Let's go with Freaky Shiki. Freaky Shiki is one of my favorites. <laughs> Freaky Shiki is so good. He says, When I was younger, I always wanted to be a paleontologist after watching Jurassic Park. My question for you guys is When you were younger, what did you want to be when you grew up? Ah, oh, hello, fellow nerd. I <laughs> wanted to be an archaeologist because of the mummy. <laughs> Brendan Fraser. I knew it. Yeah, um, I wanted to be an archaeologist, loved all that kind of stuff. For a while there, I tried to teach myself the uh, the alphabet and Egyptian hieroglyphics. Wow. You would. I know. I got my mum to get a library book out, practiced it. So it's hard, you know, like, oh, two ferns, that's a D. <laughs> Bird doing a dance, it's an A. Bird standing still. Bird standing still is a B. Ah. And those, hard, those two are hard to tell because it is... You know, a still picture. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that bird moving? No, there's no moving lines. No stink lines. <laughs> no stink lines. Guy holding spear. F. <laughs> Archaeologist. That's great. Yes, I thought I... But they still have... They still do discover fun stuff, but a lot of it has been discovered, I must say. Well, Matt, yeah, right. back in your day, what would you have liked to have been? Well, I, I went through a, a bunch of different stages. I remember at some point I wanted to be an, an architect because I like drawing and someone's like... And back then in the 90s, people weren't like <laughs> talking to kids. They wouldn't be as adventurous to say, yeah, well, you should, you should be, be an, an artist. artist. They'd be like, drawing, okay. Hmm. Well, how can you make that boring? <laughs> 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 but I, I, um, I've still got this. <laughs> be, hmm. I love to paint. Okay. How can you we cons- destroy that for you? <laughs> you considered being a nurse. <laughs> um, I, uh, a similar thing, we had a project in year seven. Uh, where we had to say what we wanted to be, and I gave myself three options. One was a nurse, one was play basketball for Australia, and uh, I think third was an actor. So okay, so let's go through them. Ha- are you a nurse? No. Have you played basketball for Australia? Not for for, Australia. for the Opals. I've played okay. in Australia. And okay. means anything That's to close. you? Acting work, you've done some. Oh, true, yeah. I was thinking more Hollywood kind of stuff, but right. hey, you got to work your way up. Yeah, we did a we at Stupid Old. We did a an educational type video last month, and just did a little cameo in it. <laughs> and into the script, oh, an acting cameo, an acting cameo, fantastic work. Yeah, thank you so much. She played a, a professional business yeah, professional. I played a businesswoman. Wow, I mean, I find that hard to believe. So, Why? if a script says so businesswoman, you, so you hire Jess Perkins. That means that you you must have really pulled it off, created the character. I acted, yes, love it. We also wrote into it because um, I script edited and I changed. I, I added in this little flashback to it was going to be questions always asked is what do you want to be when you grow up? So it's sort of appropriate here, but. Um, and they said it's been asked since the Industrial Revolution. So I did a flashback to then, and as an old guy asking a kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I go, rat catcher. <laughs> <laughs> that ended up being in the video, rat catcher. That's made it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've all achieved our dreams there. That brings us to our other favourite Patreon segment of the show. Dave, this is where we go through and thank a few of our other patrons. patrons. That's right. We like to thank the people in the order that they signed up as best we can. So if you have been hanging out, I'm sure you're coming up very soon. We appreciate every single person that every week it's a tribute to all of our patrons. This week. Totally. We just yeah. name six of them. That's true. Six? Yeah, six. Yeah, that's right. Let's do six. Okay. Well. And Jess, we should say, always, always usually comes up with a game mm. based on the topic. Could they be baronesses, empresses? Yeah, emperors? yeah. Let's give them some kind of title. Great. A royal-ish title. Yeah, a royal-ish. That. Well, let Royal-esque. me kick it off. From Wellington in New Zealand, the Windy City, beautiful city. I think it's one one of my favourite cities that I've been to. Mitchell Botting 
Botting. Oh, Captain Botting. Oh, I wanted to say Colonel. Oh, what about Colonel slash Captain? What about Captain Colonel Botting? That's great. Captain Colonel. Captain Colonel Botting from Wellington. Love that. Love Thank that. you for your Mitchell. service, Captain Colonel. We salute you, sir. We do salute you. And New Zealand, hey, it's on the dream list. It is. For the live shows. I'm so going keen. there in just about a month. Ooh. Just for a holiday. You going to Wellington? Not going to Wellington. Are you going to suss it out for us? Going mean? to the South Island. Are you going to suss it out for us? Yes. For tax reasons, you used to say yes. Yes, I am. It is a business trip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my business associate. Oh, Matt. Are Great. we going? Awesome. No, no, my other business associate. Oh, I'm going. Oh, my God, no. Thanks. Neither of you are coming. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mitchell, you bloody legend. I'd also love to thank from Melbourne, a little closer to home here in Melbourne, Georgia Robinson. And here's to you, Georgia Robinson. So you're going to say Mrs. Robinson and her title is going to be Mrs. Mrs. Robinson. No, and I bet she gets <laughs> Mrs. Robinson a lot. That Sorry, is. Georgia. Or you get Ray Charles' Georgia. Right. Both of those. Well, oh, great songs, but probably annoying if that's your name. Um, what kind of title are you feeling for Georgia? Grand Old Duke. Ooh, oh, I like that a lot. Love that. Grand Old Duke, In, Georgia uh, Robinson. For short, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that took me a sec to get. <laughs> God, that's. I mean, it's hard to top that as a title, Georgia. So hopefully yeah, you're happy hope with you like that. With that, Thank a you, Georgia. little, a little, little blaspheming for your commute. <laughs> May I thank some people? Please. Oh, I'm so glad you volunteered. Because <laughs> I would like to thank from Norway. Wow. You said it like a question, but yeah. you, you know more than us. I'm asking if that's Norway. What is? Are you pointing to a map? <laughs> N-O. It is Norway. Norway. Told ya. <laughs> N-O. And I'm definitely going to get pretty, this Pretty negative, Norway, but, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, though, Jess. Norway's a big country. Whereabouts in Norway are we talking? Finnmark. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful neck of the wood. But uh, to be even more specific. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Poor Sangmon. <laughs> Poor Sangmon, which I'm looking up on Google Maps. Looks like it's uh, it's got a military base there. Oh, wow. okay. Well, this this could work into the title. I'd oh, li- that that's true. Good, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank, and I'm I know I'm definitely going to say this wrong, and I'm sorry. Which Asmund Nordhagen? Oh, that's a beautiful name. And a beautiful name befitting of a beautiful title, Brigadier Major. Brigadier. Uh, Brig- can I just, I just want to show you on a map where this is because it is so far north in Norway. So there's Norway. Oh, wow. That's oh, wow. where it is. Right up. I would go out on a limb to say this is one of, if not our most northerly listener. Whoa. Or most That's northerly amazing. Patreon supporter. Thank you so much. Right near the top. Oh, you'd be seeing beautiful northern lights. Brigadier. Can we come visit? Oh, I love that. That's amazing. So thank you so much. Imagine it's very dark this time of year. Brigadier. Brigadier. And I'd also like to thank from Colorado. Come on, Dave. What Let me get Co? one right. Yeah. You've just got the last one right. True. <laughs> I am great Come on, at this. Dave. Let me you get all of them on. right. That's Colorado, I reckon. Okay, Google. What does CO stand for in US states? Here's a summary from CC Marketing Online. CO is a term that you hear about soon after you start looking for ways to get more traffic to your website. (laughs) CO is an acronym that refers to search engine optimization. As the term clearly states, it refers to the practice of optimizing or improving your website. As it clearly states. Patronizing much, Siri, or whatever the Google version is called. Google. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have looked it up. Uh, Thornton is a suburb north of Denver, Colorado, Woo-hoo! home of Fantastic The League Nuggets. And a terrible, scary Oh, horse. Rocky Mountain High. And it's also the, the home. The horse at the airport, damn it. <laughs> Lucifer. Lucifer. It's also the home of Dominic Webster. <gasps> Dominic Webster. Oh, great name. Mm. Dominic Webster. What about uh, Air Marshal? Ooh. Maybe he works at that that uh, secret underground airport. Yeah, I like that. And well I, also, I like how all of these ones, much like the Baroness, are all fake. It's them coming. This is them dreaming big. <laughs> um, Air Marshal. Yeah, that's right. I was born into a fancy family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were like, yeah, let's go for something fun and exotic like Baroness. 
we're we're okay. These next two, we're gonna go big. I like air marshal. What is it? Air marshal is something important. Yeah, it's a marshal of the air. It's, it's a... a marshal of the air. It's the second highest active rank of the Royal Australian Air Force. Oh, okay, that yeah, is pretty, pretty good. good. There you go. <laughs> Pretty bloody good. Marshal of the air, more like Marshal of the Yeah. yeah. Just trying to say the same things as you now. I appreciate it. I would like to thank you, if I may, from you know. Werribee here in Victoria, Emmeline Oksowski. Oksowski. Emmeline Oksowski, thank you so much for your support. And I would like to say one of my favorite ranks of all time is, of course, the dreaded Rear Admiral. Oh. Why are they dreaded? <laughs> it's, just a, it's, it's a Simpsons reference. Sorry, that was just put in there. But the, just a rear admiral, Emmeline Oksowski. Is that because Werribee is kind of famous for being a sewage treatment plant? No, I just really wanted to call someone a rear admiral. It's also got, uh, it's home to a, a great uh, wildlife park. Mm. Oh, Open Range Zoo. Yeah. I've been there, had a great time. And a mansion. Yeah. Elton John played there. What? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Emmeline, I hope you did not miss your chance to hang out. Where are we, Benny! Where are we sick? <laughs> it's funny because I, I I, wouldn't have gone there um, growing up and the only thing I knew about it was like there were jokes about it being a stinky place, but did not. I, I'm guessing they've uh, fixed up whatever issues that is. Wow. Are you appreciating this? Thanks. <laughs> Hey, I come from Thanks. a stinky suburb. <laughs> but hey, it's not so stinky now. Hey, you hey. fixed up your stinky issues. <laughs> so sorry. I love it. It's a great spot. I love the West. West is best. Well, I mean, the affluent East is, of course, the best, but there you go. Uh, I would like to thank... The affluent <laughs> East and the affluent West. <laughs> <laughs> elephant West. Do they have elephants at where yeah, it is? I do. Did you say that recently, affluent yeah, yeah, West? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, one of my new bits. <laughs> And didn't you say immediately afterwards, I, I think bet. I stole that from Kath and Kim? They're definitely, it's, <laughs> they, they say, they in Kath and Kim, I think there was a running gag that they say effluent when they meant affluent. Mm. Right, right, right. All right, just to bring us home now, I would like to thank from Erskine in Great Britain, I would like to thank Yusuf Javed. Oh, my goodness. Or Yusuf Javed. You're giving me chills. They're multiplying. Mm. Oh. Now. What are we going to call Yusuf Javed? What's... The Mega Mix? Is that a title you can have? <laughs> Where'd that come from? Greece. DJ Mega Mix. Greece Mega Mix. <laughs> you guys not familiar? It's a big hit. You guys don't know the Greece Mega Mix? <laughs> when were you born? <laughs> you know when we were born. We <laughs> tell you constantly. Say it. I, I know... message you every two days. You, I know you do say sometimes, you're like, how would I have heard of it? I wasn't even born yet. Like you've never heard of things from before the 90s. Yeah, that's true. So you don't know the film Grease? What's that? <laughs> wow. So what year was out. that? What year did that come out? I think in the 80s. Oh, no idea then. Or the 70s? I was 80s? born in 1990 and that's when time began. Right. To me. Wow. That's cool, okay. yeah. man. <laughs> that's when the world began. We mm. still have not given a oh, title yeah. to Yusuf Well, Matt Hubbard. did. said Mega Mix. Oh, we're going with that. What about Mix Mix Master? Yeah, oh, MC. That, yes, Mix Master, MC Yusuf Haved. That's cool. MC Mix Master, I reckon. Put MC first. I like it. MC Mix Master Haved. Holy shit, I'd go to that party. Please. Is he DJing at Werribee? No, no, he's not DJing. He's just going to be at it. He's a great host. <laughs> yeah, he's a great host. He is. The Werribee but, Mansion. Uh, yep. Puts a good array out of ch- uh, chips and dips. Yeah. You oh, know, nice selection of cheeses. Yes, fussy North African, please. And you love cheese, Dave. I love cheese. Mm. So all sorts. We're going to that party. I take them all. I eat them all. Okay. Nobody... Move over. Get no. out of the way. Okay. You're between me and the table <laughs> of cheese. <laughs> You're a hard man or a soft man, Dave? Oh, right down the middle. Yeah. Uh, take I would have picked that, yeah. I would have picked that for sure, that he was somewhere down the middle. Yeah. Fence sitter. <laughs> I'm hard all the way. <laughs> right. Noted. <laughs> Well, that does bring us to the end of the episode. Thanks to all the supporters of Patreon and to everyone that uh, listened to the show. You make our world. And, of course, as we sometimes say here, to remind you that if you want to suggest a topic, you don't have to be a Patreon supporter. You can do that at any time. Do go on pod.com. Uh, for those who are on Patreon, we've also got the Facebook group on there, so make sure when you sign up to add yourself into the Facebook group, which you'll find links uh, amongst the posts uh, on there and uh, you can get in contact with us if you want to at Dugon Pod on 
Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Gmail if you want to get on the email. If you if you can and if you got the time, it'd be so cool for you to give us a five star review. Give us uh, drop us a line there. Five stars would be ideal if you can. And also. If you want to just recommend us to a friend, that'd be a real cool thing. We say that every now and then, and we know some of our some of our coolest fans we've chatted to a bunch uh, got into the show because they were recommended to it from a friend or a family member. Mm. They even like uh, download the app for pod people who don't understand podcasting and and subscribe to us. We've genuinely met at some live shows people who had to have a podcast app uh, put on their phone for them, mm. and then they end up coming to the show. So nice. Anyway. That's that's something you could do if you want to. If you don't want to do it, I mean, we don't have to keep chatting about it. Matt. Sorry. Just take a big deep breath. It's okay. I know you get fired up. You yeah. did great. You did so well there. Okay. Very proud of you. I just became self-conscious during I've I'd been talking for so long. Yeah, we let you go. Yeah, I couldn't remember a time when you weren't talking. It does make you uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. You did great. No, but it is true. The more people you tell about the show, the bigger and better it can get and the more time we can spend on it. So thanks to everyone that does that. But that does bring us to the end. Yeah, drop us a line. Say hi. It's always nice to hear from you. But until next week, I'll say thanks for listening and I'll say goodbye. Laters. Bye. (laughs) I regretted that as soon as I started. Really went for it. Sorry. I thought it was nice. Hello, everybody. My name is Dave. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you. 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 Up to you.